I'm Dan Beacom. I'm the owner of uh, this RV14A. It's a uh, November 9 or 4 or 7 Romeo Victor. Had it for about two and a half years, and uh, I love it. It's a great airplane. How did you end up acquiring it? I was actually looking, I'm building an RV10, and I live in an air park, so I wanted to fly something while I'm building. And so I looked on Barnstormers, and I spent probably the better part of a month on Barnstormers trying to buy an RV14, and as soon as they would go up, I would call, but when I call, it would be like the 10th person that called, even if I was, you know, the same day listing. So I ended up putting an ad in Barnstormers saying I'm looking to buy an RV14A uh, with the Garmin avionics. And um, if you're interested in selling one, let me know. And then a gentleman from Florida called me and said he's got one available for sale. And uh, the nice thing about this plane, too, is it's got a website, rv14a.com, so I was able to go to the website before I bought the airplane and see, sort of like a pre-buy, I was able to see everything um, that went into the airplane before I committed to going down to Florida to, um, to buying it from him. But yeah, it worked out great. So it was a private sale, um, just went down there, um, spent uh, three days there. Um, first day I did a pre-buy and I combined that into a uh, condition inspection. Some people argue you may not want to do that, but I was pretty familiar with the build process. And then um, the other two days I did transition training and then brought the plane back to, uh, to Dallas. So I was pretty excited about it. What was your aviation experience before getting into the 14? Yeah, um, so I've never um, done aviation for work. I uh, got my private pilot's license in 2000. I think a year later I got my instrument, and then more recently I got my commercial and my multi-engine add-on rating. Um, but uh, I've only done it for, for fun, so it's just more of a passion than a, than a career. What kind of airplanes were you flying? I had a dry lease in a Cirrus that I flew for quite a while out of Addison Airport in Dallas. Um, I did my primary training in a uh, Cherokee, um, a 160, and uh, it's called Piper Cadet. And then I did my um, instrument training in a 172 SP Cessna. Um, and then um, did my commercial in a um, Travel Air, which is an older Baron. And uh, so that was a lot of fun. Awesome. Yeah. What do you like about the RV-14? Oh God, what, what can you not like about it? It's, um, it's fast. It will pretty much haul anything that you can put in the airplane. Uh, it's got tremendous short field capabilities. It, at our airport, we have a pretty long runway. It's 2,600 feet long and 35 feet wide paved, but um, you can get in and out at 500 feet in, in these planes and it's just absolutely a monster. So uh, for those reasons, I like it. It goes far, it goes fast, good short field, um, and it's economical. I mean, I, I, when I came up this morning, it was you know 10 gallons an hour at 165 true, which is pretty good. Excellent. Yeah. What are some of your favorite uh, destinations to fly this to? Oshkosh was fun this year. It's the first time doing the Fisk Arrival, so that was, that was a lot of fun. Um, I think um, I went to San Diego for a weekend in, in it. I went to school down there, and um, that was a lot of fun to go out to San Diego. We've been to Florida. We've been to Wisconsin, Minnesota. Um, I think the only place that I haven't been that I'd like to go at some point is more along the East Coast, maybe up to New York and um, up in that area, but that's on my to-do list. So tell me about your RV tenure you're building. Yeah, excited about it. It's been a while. It's been a five-year build, but um, I'm now at the point where uh, avionics are in, interior's in, uh, it's wired, everything's ready to go, but I'm waiting on my engine, and my engine will be here on December 22nd. So I'm um, pretty excited to, to get that done. So um, yeah, and once I get the RV-10 complete, I'll most likely sell this airplane since the performance is nearly identical. It's just a four-seater versus a two-seater. Um, and then getting in our hangar, I have a 50 by 60 hangar at our house, but um, getting two low wing airplanes into the hangar is um, a little bit more challenging. So um, yeah, so I'll end up saying goodbye, unfortunately, to 7 Roman Victor, but uh, looking forward to the 10. I'm sure she'll go to good hands I'm when sure. it comes time. Well, I have some neighbors who have already asked about oh, buying Perfect. Her. Yeah. yeah. Um, how long have you been building the 10? A little over five years. Okay. Yeah. There have been periods where I've gone uh, like gangbusters and worked a lot on the plane and then periods where I let it sit for like six months and um, for whatever reason. Um, more recently I've been working a little bit harder on a plane, especially once I committed to buying the avionics. You're sort of pot committed at that point. You can't, can't not finish the plane. Yep. Um, so 
uh, that picked up the pace again. Um, I think for the RB10, for me, and other builders have said this too, is the cabin work can be daunting. There's so much fiberglass work that goes into the airplane and it's dirty and dusty and uh, just a lot of work, but I'm through all that now, which is, which is good. Excellent. Yeah. Slow build, quick build? Quick build on both the wings and the fuselage. Well, let's go uh, see how Seven Romeo Victor flies. I'm Sounds looking good. forward to it. It's been uh, been a while since I got in some 14 time, and I'm very appreciative of the offer for you to come down and yeah. uh, give me some flight time. So it'll be fun. Let's go have some fun. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs>